Hello, Olivia. Thanks for today. Hi, Ellen. Thank you for coming. I went to your new place for the first time, and it's quite a nice place. I'm surprised that your new place was a penthouse. Well, it's not as nice as our mansion with a yard, though. Yeah, a house with a yard is nice, too. When I was a kid, I dreamed of having a dog. I always dreamed of having a big dog to play with in the yard. I hate dogs. Oh, I see. I hate animals, including dogs. Are you thinking of getting an animal in that penthouse? Well, it's not decided yet, but it's a pet-friendly property, so it's up to my husband and I to decide. No, no, no. Having an animal in the house is not allowed. If it smells even the slightest bit of animal, I'll spray disinfectant and clean it all up. What? Then you may not be able to come to our penthouse anymore. We're not sure if we're getting a dog or not, but my husband says he wants to get an animal as a pet. Sam said that? Yeah. Don't lie so obviously. Since he was a child, he's never said he wanted an animal. You're just putting the blame on him because you want to have a pet. He's actually wanted a pet since he was little, but he told me you were against it. So he put up with it until he moved out of his parents' house. Now you're blaming me. I can't believe you. You married my son and you're living in a penthouse as newlyweds. I thought even you, a poor person, were finally getting used to our upper-class lifestyle. I knew that a poor person like you, no matter how you try to fix it, would still be poor. Please don't say that. It's true that my father is not a CEO like your husband. He's just an ordinary office worker. But he put me through college and gave me a good life. He is a kind father. No matter how kind he is, without money, you can't buy things with kindness, can you? Or maybe. Are there any stores for poor people where you can buy things through kindness rather than money? Not exactly. I believe there are more important things than money. I don't think so. <laughs> See? That's how poor people think. You can call me whatever you want. But I like this way of thinking. I can't believe a person like you became the wife of the son in our upper-class family. I don't like it. It's filthy. You knew about me and my family background, right? I just assumed that you knew all about it and approved of our marriage. I'll take this opportunity to tell you. I was against it. But my husband insisted. He told me that you two were all for it. I only pretended it was in front of him. An upper-class wife should be modest and obey her husband. I was protecting my pride as an upper-class wife. I see. That's right. You really don't know what I'm talking about. From now on, I want you to make sure that you behave like an upper-class wife. I'm going to help you become a more suitable wife than you are right now. So, prepare yourself. What? For starters, join our club. Club? What do you mean? It's a social club where wealthy people gather. At my place, we gather once a week for information exchange and to have meals or tea together. The membership fee is $2,000 a month. $2,000? Do you mean $20? What? $20? <laughs> you can't buy anything with that kind of money. A kindergartner's allowance is more than that. What? How much do you give to a kindergartner? Okay. In our club, we have a luxurious meal every time. We use high-end champagne and premium ingredients. We invite top chefs to prepare the meals. To someone like you who's poor, it might sound like a fantasy. Since you've married into our family, 
you're joining our upper class ranks. It would be a problem if you didn't shed your poor mindset. I'm sorry, but I'll have to decline. I don't have any problem with your financial sense. But please, don't force it on me as well. Spending $2,000 per month is impossible, especially when we already have a $2,000 monthly loan. A loan? No way you bought that penthouse with a loan. Yes. Is this a joke? I thought you bought it outright. Loans are what poor people do. It's disgraceful. Even if you say that, there's nothing we can do. Given our incomes, the $2,000 monthly repayment is already a stretch. That's what happens when you choose a penthouse that's not suitable for your stature. Didn't your parents teach you not to buy what you can't afford outright? Wow, surprisingly sensible words coming from you. Excuse me? But there was no other choice. We can manage the monthly payment somehow. It's our issue, so you don't need to worry. Of course I'm going to worry. Jesus Christ. It makes me feel sick to have poor people in our family. We're not defaulting on the loan, so it's fine. Anyway, I can't go to the club or whatever it's called. Please understand my position. Thank you. Olivia, can you come to my place this weekend? I have a noble gathering with all my relatives. Do you mean that club you mentioned the other day? If so, I believe I declined. It's different from that. There's no membership fee, so please come. I want to introduce you to my relatives. Despite the difference in our family backgrounds, you've married into our family. I want you to engage with us and experience the atmosphere of the upper class. I understand. Wonderful. Well, then come to my house at noon. I'll be looking forward to seeing you. Ellen, why did you do that all of a sudden? Why? Because there was a filthy poor person mixed in with our noble gatherings. That's why I slapped you. <laughs> That's terrible. First of all, you invited me. I thought we might be able to make up. But instead, you slapped me and yelled at me for being poor. And then you kicked me out of the house. Thanks to you, I'm standing in the yard. What? You still haven't left? Poor people like you should leave immediately. Even if I wanted to go back, I don't have the car keys. I left my bag inside your house. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. You're using a designer bag? Yeah, so what? A poor person who can only buy a penthouse with a loan, yet using a designer bag, huh? I wonder if you're trying to look like us by doing this kind of cheap trick. Poor people are so miserable. <laughs> Just give it back. Sure. Here you go, pick it up. Hey, my bag. You shouldn't throw it out the window. I'm glad I managed to catch it, but... Oh my god, you look like a dog. You are more despicable than a dog. A poor person with no decency? <laughs> That's so rude. Stop messing around and get the hell out of here. You are a poor woman burdened by debt. Get out now. I'm so embarrassed to be related to you. I see. Then I'll stop paying the loan. What? Well, I'll leave you now. I'll be able to give you better news within a week. I'll be in touch. Ellen, we've decided to stop paying the $2,000 monthly loan. I thought I'd let you know. What? You guys had the financial capacity to pay it off in one lump sum? What on earth were you thinking? Taking out a loan instead of paying it off? Oh, no. We didn't pay it off in a lump sum. It means that we will stop paying the loan itself this month. 
Stop? Are you out of your mind? If you stop paying the loan, where are you guys going to live? You went through all the trouble to buy that luxury place and now you're letting it go after just six months? We don't plan on letting go of the penthouse. We've already paid for it. What? What are you talking about? You said you bought the place with a loan. You said you were paying $2,000 a month. That was a lie. A lie? I saved up the money with Sam before we got married. We bought our place with a lump sum payment when we moved in. The $2,000 a month I'm paying is the mortgage on your house. What? I was told not to tell you, so I accidentally mentioned the loan before, and I couldn't correct the misunderstanding about it. But that wasn't about the penthouse. I was talking about the mortgage on your house. I don't understand. It was my husband who bought our house. He's a president and super wealthy. That's why he bought it in full with cash. There is no way he would have taken out a loan like a poor person. If he were that kind of a man, I would never have married him. Exactly. It's because of that way of thinking. What? According to him, around the time of purchasing the house, the company's business wasn't going well. There wasn't enough financial stability for an all-cash purchase. However, because you look down on loans as something only poor people do, it seems he pretended to pay in full, but secretly took out a loan. It's a 40-year loan with a monthly repayment of $2,000 and there are about five years left. Oh no, I can't believe my husband was actually doing the same thing as the poor people. I thought our house was a beautiful house, but it turns out to be a house still not fully paid off with a loan? This can't be true. Well, he secretly came to our new home after we moved in, and he confessed this to us. He also apologized sincerely to us, asking us not to tell you, and requested us to take over the remaining loan secretly. Why would he do that? Even if our house had a loan, there's no way my husband is so poor he can't afford $2,000 a month. He's the president of a company. It seems the company's business is deteriorating again. So what if it's deteriorating? It's not like there's no income and his actual earnings haven't decreased. It just hasn't visibly decreased in your eyes. In reality, he has been dipping into his savings to manage everyday expenses. The biggest expense in the household seems to be your $5,000 monthly allowance. He said you would get angry and wave a knife around if he tried to decrease it. So he says he can't do anything about it. What? So, is my husband's company really in a bad situation? I can't believe it. There's no way that's true. We should have bought a house within our means instead of showing off. I should have been honest with her about the loan and the business. He said that to us in tears, regretting his actions in his younger days. Considering our income, the $2,000 monthly loan was tough, but... He sincerely apologized to us and asked for help. So we discussed it with Sam and agreed. We believed there were more important things than money, so we were okay with making a little sacrifice to help him. Well then, keep paying from now on. Why are you telling me to stop now? You slapped and yelled at me in front of the relatives, didn't you? After that incident, including Sam and your husband... We all agreed that we couldn't let you get away with it any longer. From now on, we'll deduct the loan from your allowance forcibly. What? Also, the total amount of the allowance will be reduced. You will only receive $1,000. Only $1,000? That's no way to make a living. You can. It's enough to live alone. Since rent isn't included in the $1,000... There should be enough. Fine then. It's not like it matters if the allowance is reduced. If I need more, I'll just ask my husband. 
For shopping, I can just use my husband's card. Wait, what are you misunderstanding? Of course, he will be leaving the house. What? I said, it's enough to live alone. It's a great opportunity to let you live on $1,000 for a month. If he stayed close, it wouldn't make sense, would it? Plus, it would be troublesome if he started waving a knife to him. He has already moved to a safe place. He took all his cards, money, and valuables with him. Why would he do something like that? Is he trying to starve me to death? No one can starve on $1,000. You said that an upper-class wife should obey her husband, didn't you? I don't think that way, but people have their own ways of living. Well, you are the one who said so, so you should own your word. You can do that, right? This is unbelievable. I can't accept this reality. I knew you'd come. Just because you don't know where your husband is, you decided to storm into our place. It's just as expected, so it's funny. <laughs> this is no time to be laughing. Why is there a dog in your house? Oh, it's our guard dog. Since you don't like dogs, we decided to get one. Just as the burden of $2,000 per month is gone, we have financial flexibility. Although we call it a guard dog, it's a Pomeranian puppy. It barks so much. It even tried to bite me. How aggressive and rude. This is why I hate animals. I guess even puppies are not to be underestimated. If a villain comes in, it barks to drive them away. Who's the villain here? Well then, let me rephrase that more accurately. An ex-upper-class wife in her 60s, left with nowhere to go after being abandoned by her husband. Despite her pride, she is incompetent and tends to rely on others while complaining. The absolute worst kind of crappy old lady. Do you understand now? What the hell? You weren't the type to say such things. You used to talk about the importance of kindness, didn't you? What happened to the poor people's mindset? I've learned that there are people in this world for whom kindness doesn't matter. I learned that from you. It's like we are living in a completely different world. People who only think about berating, looking down on, and using others don't seem like human beings to me. A dog that doesn't understand language seems to communicate better than you. Ugh. What? Can't you speak human language anymore? Don't make fun of me. I am your husband's mother, you know. My husband is a president, and I am a super classy, upper class lady. Do you think it's okay to have that kind of attitude toward me? If you keep making a scene in front of my door, I'll call the police. Oops. You've already called them. It's because you are so noisy. The security guard has arrived. Wow. This is indeed a luxury apartment. Security is very tight. What the hell? Send these people away. No, I won't. I'll change the locks on the house. So please don't enter without permission from now on. Well then, good luck with your new life. <laughs> no way. I absolutely can't stand this. It seems the security guard escorted her out, and she reluctantly returned home. Instead of quietly adjusting to a $1,000 lifestyle, she contacted her friends and relatives all over the place, asking for money to borrow. But everyone already knew what she did to me and her husband had left her. And it appears she's been left on her own. <laughs> her prideful $2,000 membership club had to be cancelled. Now, it seems she's completely disheartened with her pride shattered. Meanwhile, Sam's father managed to rebuild the company, and now he expresses a desire to rebuild their marriage. However, if it seems impossible, he's contemplating divorce. On the other hand, my husband and I are currently head over heels for the new dog we recently adopted. 
While maintaining a connection with Sam's dad, we plan to carefully assess whether Ellen has genuinely reflected on her actions. Luna, is this a good time? I have something important to tell you. Harry, what's wrong? What's so important? Break up with me. What? I don't want to be with you anymore. Hey, what's going on all of a sudden? We had a nice date yesterday. How dare you trick me? What? I just heard from a friend. You're from a single parent family, right? Yeah. Yeah, but what about it? What do you mean, what about it? It's so important. Why didn't you tell me before? I'm sorry. I've been meaning to tell you. I just haven't had a chance. Are you kidding me? I was even thinking of marrying you. Marriage? What, you were going out with me with no intention of getting married? It's not that I wasn't thinking about it. We've only been dating for less than six months. You're my type, so I was thinking of proposing to you soon. But if you're just living with your mother in a single family home, it's a different story. I don't want to go out with a poor woman. Poor? Single parent home, it means poor, right? That's prejudice. It's true that when I was a child, I may have had it a little harder than other families. But we weren't poor. Now I work to support my mother. You support your mother? Yes, I do. She got very sick a few years ago and had to quit her job. It's only natural that I, as her daughter, should support her. Then you are poor, aren't you? Don't insist on saying we're poor. We don't have all the luxuries, but we can live a normal life. I still can't do it. If you marry me, I'll have to take care of your mother too, won't I? I hate parasitic women like that. I don't intend to be a parasite. I have a full-time job. I make enough to support my mother. I won't infringe on you. You're just an office worker, right? You do desk work in a small business. You don't get paid much, so don't act like you're a big shot. I'm not acting like I'm a big shot. You are really disrespecting me, aren't you? Anyway, you're making me feel poor. Let's break up. Harry, wait. Don't jump to conclusions. Let's talk it over. There's nothing to talk about with a poor woman. Oh, no. Take care. Hey, Luna, how are you doing? Harry, long time no see. It's been a long time, right? It's been a year since then. So, what do you want? Oh, come on. Even if I don't want anything, one little text won't hurt anything, will it? I thought you and I broke up. Of course we broke up. Until recently, we were just friends, right? I'm busy right now. If you don't need me, I've gotta go. Bullshit. What? You're not busy, are you? Huh? It's no use being so tough. I heard a rumor again. I heard you quit your job. What's that? You already know about it? You and I were in the same club in college. I still keep in touch with my friends from college. Information comes in quickly. Hmm. Are you stupid? Why? Don't you know why? What do you think you're doing quitting your job when you're already poor? How are you going to live? Are you going to be homeless? Are you going to be on welfare? I'm neither of those things. Even though I quit my job, I'm still working part-time. Huh? Part-time job? Maybe you're in shock because I dumped you. You must have lost your mind. You have to support your sick mother. How are you going to survive on a part-time job? I have enough saved up from my time as a company employee, so I'll be fine. Besides, I quit the company for a good reason. Why did you quit? It's none of your business, so I'm not going to tell you. What the hell? Boring bitch. Never mind. Unlike you, I'm doing great. I met this girl at a party and we started going out. She's three years younger than me and really cute. And unlike you, her family is rich. If we can just get married, I'll be set for life. Well, that's great. That's all you wanted to talk about? What's with the cold shoulder? Why don't you at least give me an update? You went out of your way to make fun of me, didn't you? That's not true. I have a new girlfriend and I'm worried about my ex-girlfriend. Can't you see how kind I am? It's none of your business. Well then, I have to go to my part-time job. Wow, it's Sunday and you have a part-time job? No time to be poor, huh? Whatever. It's a waste of my time to talk to you. Don't contact me again. Okay, okay. 
Thanks for working for low wages. Hey, Luna. Don't ignore me. Hey, Luna. Hey, Luna. Yes? Oh, I finally got a reply. Thank goodness you didn't block me. Luna, it's been a while. Um, who's this? Huh? Don't tell me you forgot about me. It's Harry. Harry. Yes, it's Harry, isn't it? I can see your name on the display. Which Harry is it? Are you kidding me? I told you it's your ex, Harry. Oh, the Harry who dumped me. That's right. I've been telling you that for a while now. I'm sorry. I know a few other people with the same name. I haven't been in touch with you for a couple of years. I didn't know who you were. Damn, you're a cold woman to forget your boyfriend. No, no, no. You're not my boyfriend anymore. Don't keep calling me. I thought I told you not to contact me. Well, that was seven years ago, so let's just forget about it. Forget about that. You're amazing. What? I heard you're rich now. Rich? What's up with you all of a sudden? Don't play dumb with me. I heard it from a friend. You're the president now, aren't you? That's amazing. You're in your thirties and you're a woman. You're sharp-eared as ever. I'm a great networker, aren't I? Well, I was surprised. When I contacted you before, I heard you quit your job and were working part-time. I thought you'd be living in poverty by now. Did you quit your job to start your own business? Yes, that's right. I was preparing to start my own business while working part-time. It was tough when I first started the company, but with the help of a lot of people, we've been able to run the business just fine. That's great, Luna. Yeah. I've always thought you were a smart girl. I guess I was right after all. Huh? What are you talking about? You've always looked down on me, calling me a poor woman. I couldn't help it. You were poor back then. But I believe that one day you would overcome your poverty and succeed. I'm proud of you as a boyfriend. And that's why you're not my boyfriend. Don't get smart with me now. I'm busy with work. If you don't have anything else, I'll end the conversation. Well, well, wait. I've got some good news for you. What? I'll marry you and we'll start over. Excuse me? You must be so surprised. You didn't expect me to propose to you? Yes, I was so surprised I almost fell off my chair. Luna, you're the president. You're busy every day, right? I'll stay by your side and support you. If you want, I can be a full-time house husband. I'll even take care of your mother. Wait a minute. You have a cute younger girlfriend, don't you? I broke up with her a long time ago. Oh, weren't you trying to marry into wealth? That didn't work out. I thought she was from a good family, but she wasn't. She just dressed high-ended to get rich men. Oh, I see. I was totally fooled. I had no idea that she was also trying to make a fortune. I'm so sorry I fell for that woman. Well, I guess we both have that in common. So you dumped her first? She dumped me before I could dump her. She had no intention of marrying a regular office worker with an average income. That's too bad. I work for a big company. I make a decent salary. She didn't want to marry a guy in his mid-thirties with a flat salary. Wow, that's pretty harsh. Don't worry about it. I'm free now, so we can get married any time. Huh? Well, I'm looking forward to the wedding now. I'm sure you'll have a lot of guests when you're the president of a company. We'll have to find a big place for the ceremony. Um... Where do you want to go for your honeymoon? Do you want to go abroad like a celebrity? Or do you want to go to a resort inside the country and just relax? Of course, you'll be paying for everything, so we can do whatever you want. You know what? I'd like to have two kids if possible. You have money. We'll build our own house as soon as we get married. Let's have a big yard where I can play catch with the kids. And I'd let my big dog run free in the yard. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Hey, just back up a moment. Stop being delusional. What? I'm not being delusional. I'm just making plans for the two of us. Our plans? You're just talking about what you want to do. 
Luna, there's no need to hide it. Just be honest. Huh? You're old enough to want to get married soon, right? You won't be able to have kids if you keep waiting. I'm already married. What? I'm married, so I can't marry you. Well, not even if I was single. I have no intention of marrying you. What did you say? I didn't hear anything about you getting married. Oh, for someone who brags about his network? I guess you didn't get the important parts. When did you get married? Who's the guy? Five years ago. I went to a seminar before I started my business. My husband was the instructor. We have two kids, by the way. What? Wait a minute. You got married without consulting me? And what on earth do you think you're doing? Having kids too? Huh? It's up to me whether I get married or have kids. Why do I have to consult you, a stranger? You can't call me a stranger. I was your boyfriend up to seven years ago. Seven years later, we're strangers. But I still love you. I won't let you just go and get married without asking me. What? You dumped me, so what are you talking about now? I left you because you were poor and I had no choice. It's not that I don't like you anymore. But you made a new girlfriend and bragged about it. She dumped me and you're not poor anymore. You're the only one I love right now. I don't care what you say. I'm already married. Then leave your husband and remarry me right now. What? Instead of being with a man who has an unstable job as a lecturer, I'm sure you'd feel safer being married to a stable guy like me. Not really. Huh? I'm financially independent. I don't plan to depend on my husband. Besides, he makes a lot more money than you do. Just because you work for a big company doesn't mean you're stable. Oh, come on. And my husband is nice to my mom. He's the best partner I've ever had. There's no reason to leave him. Then what about my feelings? Huh? I love you. If I'm going to get married, I can't think of anyone else but you. I'm 35 and all my friends are getting married. I want to start a family too. Then why don't you go to a party and find someone to marry? I can't do without you. Please marry me. I can't marry you because I'm already married. Don't be so cold. I'm sure I can make you happier than your husband. If I get ahead, I'll even make more money than I do now. Right? Let's start over with me. You're such an asshole. What did you say? You wanted to dump me because you thought I was poor. Now that I'm rich, you're all over me. You say you like me, but you don't like me. You like money. That's not true. I really like you. I'm wasting my time talking to you. Well then, don't contact me again. Luna! <laughs> Please marry me. Luna, how's the company doing? Oh no, Harry. Huh? What's the matter? What are you so surprised about? I screwed up. I forgot to block you. What the hell? That's terrible saying something like that directly to someone. What do you want? If it's marriage, you'll never get it. No, it's not. I've given up on marriage. Then what now? I'm going to work for your company. What? Actually, I'm unemployed right now. You quit your job? Yes, I did. Why? I had a little trouble with my boss. I got mad and slammed down a resignation letter. And it was accepted. I thought someone would try to stop me from quitting. But then, just like that, the resignation process was underway. Damn it. I didn't think I'd actually have to quit. You submitted your resignation voluntarily, so I guess it can't be helped. That's why I chose your company as my new employer. You chose? You're being pretty condescending there, aren't you? A talented guy like me would be more than welcome, wouldn't he? I'm sure it's easier for you to work with someone you know well. It's easier for you to do your job. Look here. So, when do you want me to start work? I've already taken my paid vacation from my old company. I'm all set and ready to go. I decline. What? We have enough employees. Oh, come on. You won't hire me? I doubt your mental stability when you think I would hire you at the drop of a hat. Because I'm an elite who until recently worked for a major company. And we were even talking about marriage. You're just going to walk away? We were last together seven years ago. We broke up long ago. I have no obligation to hire you. Just think about it. 
Besides, you say you're brilliant, but the fact that no one stopped you when you tried to leave the company, that means you weren't very good, right? What are you talking about? I was one of the top performers. I contributed a lot to the company. Then there must have been something else wrong. Oh well, anyway, help me out. When one of us is in trouble, we're both in trouble. I don't remember you helping me. Please, Luna. If you're not short on employees, a part-time job is fine. Just hire me. We're good on part-timers too. Please find someplace else. It has to be your company. Huh? You don't have to turn to me. I'm sure there are many companies looking for employees. Well, the thing is, no one will hire me. Oh my goodness. After I left my old company, I tried to get a new job, but I kept getting turned down for interviews. I can't believe it. I'm from a big company and I'm a good worker. Hiring managers at every company have poor judgment for people, don't they? Well, it's not whether you're good or not. I guess they were more interested in your personality. What do you mean? Think back on how you've behaved in the past. I would never hire someone as arrogant and selfish as you. Hey, Luna, I'm sorry about the past. Just hire me. How many times do I have to tell you? No! I apologize for making fun of you by calling you poor. I'm sorry I dumped you. I'm sorry about that and I want you to help me. I've almost used up all my savings. I'm in real trouble. If you need money, why don't you do something in the labor industry? There are plenty of jobs out there if you're not choosy. You want me to do manual labor? Give me a break. I've only worked at a desk for over 10 years. Of course, I can't do hard work. You can stay spoiled like that forever. I'm sure you'll regret it one day when you're really poor. I don't want to be poor. I need your help. You'll have to do something on your own. That's where I need your help. I'll do whatever you want, even chores. You're persistent. This time, I'm really gonna block you. Well, goodbye. Wait for me, Luna. <laughs> Seriously? Did you really block me? Luna, don't give up on me. After that, Harry desperately looked for a job. He managed to get hired as a field worker. However, he had neither the strength nor the guts to do the job, so he screwed up a lot. His bosses yelled at him so much, he was physically and mentally a disaster. But he had no choice but to work for a living. Rumor has it that he goes to the job site every morning, crying with his tail tucked between his legs. As for me, my company's sales have increased and the number of employees has grown. So we have moved to a new office. It is tough to raise a child while being the president of a company though. My husband is very proactive in taking care of the housework and childcare, which is a big help. My mother is also in good health these days and when I am busy with work, she is now able to take care of our child. I would like to continue to live with my loving family, supporting each other. Hi, Jamisha. I just got your message. I finally took my lunch break, so sorry that I'm late. Are you having your lunch break now? What a nasty company. I'm sorry to hear that you have to work like a slave. That's not true. Lunch for the residents is our priority. So for the staff, our lunch is always served at this time. To be honest, I don't really mind. By the way, how can I help you? Oh, yes. What's with that bad lunch you made? Bad lunch? I made some sandwiches and soup today. I can't eat that. The ingredients are so bland. The seasoning is thin and the bread is a bit hard. Are you going to make me eat something that tastes so bad every day? I think there was nothing wrong when I made it since I tasted all of them. But, sorry if I disappointed you. Don't make excuses. It must have tasted bad when you made it, since it tastes this bad. You didn't do your best because it was my lunch, right? No, that's not true. When are you going to get better at cooking? Well, I can't expect you to do that if you're always dealing with old people every day. Jamisha, please don't talk like that. 
cooking has nothing to do with my current job. You have to work feverishly because of your low income, right? If you're like that, you'll get tired and cut corners on the housework. I'm not cutting corners. How can you say that after serving me that terrible lunch? If you don't want me to complain, you should make a better dish. You're so annoying. I think you've gone too far, Jamisha. I thought you'd be a better wife, but in fact, you are really useless. I wonder why my son decided to get married to you. This is just unacceptable. Why don't you learn about how to do household chores properly before concentrating on your work? I'm not useless. Besides, I'm not a servant nor a slave. How dare you talk back to me again? Looks like talking back to me is the only thing you're capable of doing. You're no better than a housekeeper or a slave. I can't believe you just said that. You're being too harsh. If you feel that way, you should take your housework a little more seriously. You have no right to talk back to me, Amelia. Yes, I understand. Jamisha, I just saw your message. What's wrong? Oh, Amelia. Actually, the clothes I had ordered from the department store are arriving today. Can you pick them up after work? Today? Yes, because they arrived today. The department store is in the opposite direction, and the cars will be crowded during the rush hour when I'm about to go home. Can I do that on my day off? What? I called you because I wanted you to get it today. Why can't you understand that? If I go to the department store, I'm sure I'll be home late today. I don't want you to come home late. I mean, if you do that, dinner will be served late too. My son will get hungry when he arrives home. I know. Please wait until my day off. I'll get the clothes for you. Huh? Are you trying to take away my fun? What? It was a dress I really wanted, and they didn't have it in my size when I visited the shop, so I had to order it. I was so looking forward to receiving it. I'm sorry to hear that, but I have to go shopping for dinner. If I go to the department store, I'll be late. That's enough. I won't ask you anymore. You're really useless no matter what I ask you. I'm sorry. Don't worry about dinner. Just go get me some clothes. What? But then, who's gonna prepare the dinner? Landon and I are going to go eat Chinese food nearby. Are you talking about the fancy restaurant near here? Yes. Is it bad? No, it's not bad. But isn't it a little overpriced? That restaurant is for some special occasion. I'll buy you a takeout meal to eat right away. Oh, are you worried about the money? To be honest, yes. I can understand that because you're an incompetent person with low income. But don't worry. My son, unlike you, is super bright. What do you mean? As you know, Landon graduated from a prestigious university. He also got a job at a well-known company in our hometown. He's in good hands so you don't have to worry about money. An incompetent wife like you should just shut up and do as you're told. That's not true. As a matter of fact, Landon is... Stop nagging me! Why do you always talk back to me? Can't you even say yes once in a while? Anyway, go get my clothes. Did I make myself clear to you, Amelia? Yes, Jamisha. As you wish. Hi, Jamisha. Sorry I'm late to reply again. What is this picture you sent me? It's a credit card bill. I wonder why you ask me such a stupid question. Nothing more than that. I understand that, but why are you sending me this? Because I want you to deposit money. Can't you even understand that? Why do I have to deposit the money? Because it's my order. Wait a minute. There's no way I can deposit $2,000. Why not? 
In the first place, what did you use that money for? Well, various things. What do you mean by various things? Do I even have to give a breakdown to you? I used that for buying clothes, lunch with friends, and for the Chinese dinner the other day. By the way, I wonder if it also includes the cost of that overnight trip I took with a friend the other night. You spent all of that money alone? That's right. To stay young forever, you need to invest in yourself. So you're talking about self-investment. It's just a luxury expense, isn't it? Luxury expense? That's rude. I can't pay $2,000 for your overly extravagant purchases. I'm sorry, but you will have to pay for it yourself. Huh? What are you talking so cheekily about? You're relying on my son's income to pay your bills. You have a low income from an incomprehensible job. But you're being so pompous and arrogant. I beg your pardon? If you can't pay my credit card bill, why don't you change your job? Try to find a job that pays a little better. I don't have a low-income job. And about your son's income? Shut up! How much more are you willing to go against me? You can't even do a single household chore. I'm not talking about housework now, am I? I can't pay what I can't pay no matter what you say. If you say you can't pay for this, then get out of this house. Excuse me? No matter how good my son is, you're relying too much on that boy's income. Anyway, I'm the boss in this house. Go and deposit the $2,000. If you refuse, I'll have you leave this house. Oh no, I'll talk to my husband about this. Amelia, did you give me a call a while ago? I did. Where are you now? Um, I had to take care of something. You shouldn't waste your time, Landon. If you've got the time, maybe you should go into the field and study. Yeah, I'll do that starting tomorrow. So, what is it? Your mother asked me to deposit $2,000 into the account. $2,000? For what? Apparently, it's the money she spent on shopping and fun. She paid everything with credit card. Really? That's so typical of her. What do you mean? We can't afford to pay $2,000 that your mother spent on fun right now. You should talk to your mother first. But it won't do you any good even if I tell my mother. My mother is a person who thinks that whatever she said is absolute. We don't have time for jokes like that. I know, but... Besides, your mother thinks of me as a slave. Wait, let me correct that. She said I'm less than a slave. Seriously? She might be right about that. What? I work full-time and do all the housework. I'm neither a slave nor less than a slave. I'm doing my duty as a wife. You don't know what you're talking about, do you? In my house, my mother's word has always been absolute. I'm being treated so harshly and unreasonably. Are you telling me that you won't defend me? What's the point of defending you? My mom's right anyway. I don't think that's the point. You're my husband, right? Tell her that we can't pay for her credit card bill, okay? I don't want to do that. Mom's going to talk me out of it anyway. If you really can't pay, why don't you tell her? Huh? Why should I do that? She's your mother, right? I think you should tell her exactly what's going on with you right now, too. Give me a break. That's my line. Anyway, you should tell your mother about the $2,000. I'm sure your mother won't be listening to me. Okay. Hey, Amelia, did you deposit the $2,000? Jamisha, me and my husband can't deposit that money. Huh? How incompetent are you? Are you incapable of doing what I say? 
because that money is mostly for your entertainment expenses. It's not money we need to live on, is it? Why should we pay such money? I just can't understand it. You can't even do the housework and you only have a low-income job. You should pay that much since you're being such an incompetent wife. No matter how you look at it, that's the money you should be paying. How much more of a useless wife can you be? What I say is absolute in this house. My son grew up learning that. I told him that you want us to put $2,000 in the bank account. I know. He told me too. It sounds like you've been bad-mouthing me a lot, huh? That I'm treating you like a slave? You want him to tell me that you can't deposit the money, right? Did he say it like that? Landon trusts me. In this house, what I say is absolute. You are no better than a slave if you are always rebelling and disobeying me. I'm not your slave. I'm sure my son is annoyed because you're like that. Your expression always speaks loud. Is he complaining so much about me? Isn't it obvious? I'm sure he regrets marrying you since you're such an incompetent person. After all, Landon is a good boy who is capable and obedient to me. I'm sure he feels that marrying you is a hassle. I don't think it's a hassle. Is that really what he thinks? I work and do all the household chores by myself. Why would he feel that it's troublesome? Huh? How dare you say that you are doing the housework properly? I didn't think you were such a brazen wife. Then I guess I'll have to ask you to divorce my son. Divorce? Yes. We don't need an incompetent wife who does nothing but rebel against her mother-in-law. I want Landon to leave you immediately. You were the wrong wife for this house. I'm going to find a new wife for the sake of my son and family. So, you're telling me that you want a wife who doesn't work and is good at housework? I see. I understand. But even if that works for you, I wonder if Landon will agree with that. You don't have to worry about that. That's not how it works. You are too harsh. Stop blabbering nonsense. I'm asking you so much and you're reluctant to even pay my credit card bill. You are a lousy wife. Honestly, I can't deal with you anymore. What? I'm going to ask Landon to write the divorce papers and I need you to sign your name on the form and turn it in. I've never discussed divorce with my husband, but you still want us to get a divorce? Yes, I do. I know that Landon agrees with me. So, I want you to pack up your stuff and leave today. Is that clear? Okay then. Amelia, I need to ask you something. What is it? I already cut ties with you, so I have nothing to do with you. That's not important. Can you explain why my son is fired from his job? He said that you fired him. Yes, you're right. Your son was fired by me. Huh? What do you mean? I've been telling you that I have a proper job, but you didn't listen to me. I don't remember you telling me that. You've been working a low-income job for a while now, haven't you? I'm a caregiver. I know what that is. It's not a lucrative job. Our work is not lucrative or unprofitable. That's why you keep doing that job to keep yourself afloat. I'm on the front lines of caregiving myself, but I'm also the manager of a facility. What? You mean you're the president? I don't really like the term president, but I guess that's what it means. You're kidding, right? I can't believe you're the president. And why should you fire a good boy like Landon? You don't know anything about him. What are you talking about? Your son was fired from his previous company too. Fired? When was that? About two months ago. What? Why was he fired? He was very unprofessional at work. 
That must be a mistake. My son is a good man. But it's true that he was fired. He was absent without notice, harassed other employees, and even violated the company rules. I can't believe he did that. So you're saying that he has been unemployed for the past few months? Yes, that's right. I told him many times to look for a job, but he didn't want to move on his own. When I suggested him to work at my nursing home, he said he'd do his best, so I offered him the job. You gave him a job offer, but in the end you fired him? Yes, I did. How could you do such a terrible thing? Your son used the privilege of being my husband to access the facility's office. He was stealing money from the safe under the watchful eye of the staff. No kidding. There's no way my son would do such a thing. It's just a story you made up, isn't it? I'm telling you the truth. The clerk insisted that the books didn't match the cash, so I was trying to figure out why. I checked the security camera in the office just to be sure. I found footage of your son opening the safe and taking the money. I fired him immediately. Oh no, there's no way that boy would do something like that. He was fired from his last job, but he wasn't even looking for a job. Also, he was away a lot. Apparently, your son was addicted to gambling. Gambling? Maybe he thought it was just a change of pace at first, but he had too much time on his hands, so he got more and more addicted. By the time I realized it, he had used up all my savings, but he still couldn't quit gambling, and it seems he was stealing money from my company. It's theft, isn't it? Theft? Or maybe it's embezzlement since he was betraying me, whom I trusted, and stealing from me. I'm now discussing with my lawyer about your son. Oh no. Does that make my son a criminal? You are the president of the company, aren't you? Do something about it. There's no way I can help your son, because your son's theft was caught on the security camera. The entire staff knows about it. I can't just pretend I don't know about it. So why don't you just take advantage of your privilege as president? Why should I do that? As a business owner, I should never do that. Are you telling me that you don't care about what happens to my son? Because it can't be helped. He's the one who's responsible for his own bad behaviors. Or are you telling me that your son can't even make his own decision? I don't think so. Besides, even if he had gotten a job with us as planned, he'll be fired anyway. Why? Because of absenteeism, power harassment of other employees, and violations of the company rules. He was fired from his previous job because of the same reasons. I don't think someone like him can just change his behaviors in a short period of time. I think your education must have been a problem too. Huh? Is it my fault? I raised my son diligently. That's why I brought up an excellent son. Your excellent son is absent without permission most of the time. He's also harassing his co-workers. Besides, he embezzled from the company. Is that what you call an excellent son? That can't be true. Then what's going to happen to that boy? We'll probably have to sue him for embezzlement. We're talking with our lawyer in that direction. So the police will get him too? I guess so. Besides, I'll also charge him alimony for the divorce. He didn't even bother to search for another job after he quit his last job. He wasn't willing to help me when you bullied me. He embezzled money by taking advantage of the fact that his wife is the president of the company. There's no reason I can't charge for the alimony, right? He's your ex-husband. You must give him a little preferential treatment. I refuse. He's the one who was so oblivious when I asked for help. By the way, your credit card bill of $2,000 will be charged to you. Don't forget about that. Well, I guess I should use my son's savings. Huh? Don't you understand what I just said? 
Your son has used up all his savings while he was unemployed. I'm sure he's penniless now. No way. That's why I told you to deposit the money. You've got to be kidding me. Why should I pay you with the money I worked so hard for? I don't get it. I've had enough. Oh, no. What's going to happen to my son and me now? You just need to be prepared for the worst. I think it's the result of treating your son's wife like a slave and spending as much as you want. Because your son was raised by you who seems to lack common sense. I think he might have had something important as a human being distorted. In a way, he is a victim of your education. What a terrible thing to say. I've lived with you as your mother-in-law and you don't even want to help me? There is no way I owe you anything after being treated so terrible like that. I will never speak to you or your son again. Please do not contact me ever again. If you ever come near me, I will report you to the police without hesitation. So please be prepared for that. Are you serious? Please help us! Absolutely not. Please think about what you've done. Besides, I'm no longer married to your son. I will block your number too. Amelia, please! Don't abandon me and my son! After that, I filed a claim for alimony against my ex-husband through my lawyer. Also, he was found guilty of embezzlement in my company and was fined about $5,000. However, my ex-husband, who could neither pay the alimony nor the fine, had no choice but to ask his relatives to pay it on his behalf. Because of that, now their relatives are giving them cold shoulders. The relatives also said that they will cut ties with Landon and his mother after the payment. Now, they're renting a small apartment on the outskirts of town. Seems that they are also feeling ashamed of themselves. My ex-husband, who has not been able to find a regular job, has been working several part-time manual labor jobs. Jamisha is also working part-time as a cashier to make ends meet. Even so, it seems that they can barely make it through a month. Anyway, serves them right. As for me, I'm still working as a caregiver. I really want to devote myself to nursing care work, where I have direct contact with the residents. I've entrusted my father with the responsibility of being the president of my company. I want to continue doing my best to bring smiles to the faces of as many residents as possible. Did you go on a date with her? A friend of a friend of mine is a director of the hospital. And he mentioned that his daughter is still single. So introduced you to her. You already invited her on the date right away, huh? That's my son. Well, yeah. She's totally my type, mom. I thought it was an unparalleled opportunity. So, how is it going with her? Oh, it's perfect. She seems to like me too. When I asked to be my girlfriend with marriage in mind, she immediately said yes. That's amazing. You're not only excellent, but also good with women. Thank you, mommy. Marrying a beautiful and wealthy woman is the best. Yesterday, when I said I was broke before payday, she said for our date. Wow, she's so nice. Well then, let's start preparing for the divorce from that trashy wife. After all, being with the daughter of the director of a big hospital makes the loser useless. <laughs> That's right. Susie is a school dropout, and her parents are also poor, self-employed people. If I can marry a woman from a wealthy family, I want to break up with Susie soon. That's right. Let's kick the wife out quickly. You, and Ellie who graduated from a top university, and your current wife don't much. But can I really divorce so easily? It's not like there's a major problem with Susie. 
and I can't just ask for a divorce because I found a new girlfriend. I can't be honest about it, right? Susie, despite her appearance, can be quite frightening when angry. It's okay. I have a good idea. Huh? Leave it to me, son. I'll make sure that you get the divorce. How do you plan to ensure the divorce? Oh dear, I'll keep it a secret for now. What is it? Are you planning to use methods you can't tell me about? Well, it's just part of the excitement. I'll make sure it's a success, so don't worry. I'll create a situation where divorce is unavoidable. Mom, you're scheming something, aren't you? <laughs> But I know you are the smartest, Mom. I trust you. I'll leave everything to you. If the plan succeeds, you have made a great match. As a mother, I can enjoy a comfortable life too. Oh, that sounds great, Mommy. Fortunately, your wife and I get along for now. So she won't suspect that I'm trying to get you a divorce. I'll go to your house today and start with my plan. You tell her you have a certain business trip or something. And make sure you don't come home today. Got it. I will tell her I won't be back until tomorrow evening. I'll send her a message now. Mom, you are such an amazing mother as always. I can't wait to hear the good news. Leave it to me. I'll make sure we have enough money for the wedding preparations. We won't live in a crumbled apartment like now. We might even move into a newly built mansion right after the wedding. <laughs> I can't wait. Mom! What, Susie? What's going on? You seem flustered after all. Were you surprised to see me alive? What are you talking about? Mom, you did it, didn't you? Huh? I'm asking what you're talking about. Don't play innocent, please. You knew I can't drink alcohol. Yet you made me drink beer, right? Huh? You can't drink? I thought an uneducated woman like you loves alcohol, you know. Stop joking around. When I introduced myself to you before, I mentioned that my body can't tolerate alcohol. Besides, educational background and alcohol are not related. Well, it was a long time ago. I've forgotten about it. I've mentioned it every time we've met. So yesterday, when you came to the house, I refused when you offered me a beer. You insisted, saying, it was a beer that even I can drink. You forced me to drink, didn't you? So I thought it was non-alcoholic beer or something. But it turned out to be real beer. Thanks to that, I lost consciousness on the spot. You left me and quickly went home, right? I'm sorry about that. I thought you were tired and had fallen asleep. That's why I left you alone. But now, if you're messaging like this, you're fine drinking beer after all. I'm at the hospital now. My friend got worried because she couldn't reach me last night. So she came to check on me at home. She found me collapsed on the floor and took me to the hospital. My husband said he had a sudden business trip and hasn't come home. If my friend had not found me, I might have been in the outer life by now. Damn it. It was close. What? No, it's nothing. It was close? You did it on purpose, didn't you? What? You knew I couldn't drink. You forced me to drink alcohol. And when I lost consciousness, you left me alone. That's what happened.
right? I can't help it. Well, I will tell you now. I don't like you. So I thought I'd give you a little pushback. You don't like me? I thought we had gotten along well with each other. When Jake and I decided to get married, you told me that you were glad to have a good-natured wife like me. After we got married, we went on different trips together. You even came to visit us after we got married. So I thought you didn't have any problems with me. What an idiot. <laughs> of course, I was acting. I was just playing the kind mother-in-law for the sake of my son. I always hated you for seducing my son. What? Think about it. My son is an elite graduate from a top university. And I'm ashamed that his wife is a high school dropout. Your words and actions reveal your poor upbringing. It's getting on my nerves. I am a high school dropout, but I'm more good now. And I'm a decent person. I don't think I've done anything to be just like that. You may be decent now, but you're still a high school dropout. I put up with it for a long time, and I was doing my best. But now that my husband has passed away, I no longer have to force myself to be nice to you. It's just too stressful to smile at someone you don't like. But even if you do not like me, sending me to the hospital on purpose is too much. My god, I screwed up. I should have given you something with a higher alcohol content than beer. How could you say that? If you had done something like that, it could have been worse. I, for one, think my son's marriage is a failure. My son should have found a more suitable wife. Instead, he married a high school dropout loser. I wish he'd just get the divorce. Even if that's what you feels, if Jake and I didn't intend to divorce, there's nothing you can do about it. That's why I made you drink. If only you were gone, my son can marry another woman. And yet, you were rushed to the hospital? Jesus Christ, sist. You were really annoying. I can't believe you. Mom, do you know what you're saying? Yes, and I'm serious. A mother must protect a son from a woman like you. I would do anything to make him happy. No matter how much you hate me, Jake chose me as his wife. I'll tell him what you did. Do what you want. I don't think telling my son will help you. If he finds out his mother is such a cruel person, I'm sure he would be shocked. You might be disowned by Jake. That's unfortunate. But my son agrees with me. What? I guess you don't know anything about this. My son wants to leave you. To help him get what he wants. I just helped him to get a divorce from you. You're kidding. Susie, please leave my son. Or I'll really show no mercy next time. No way. Wait a minute. Let me talk to Jake directly. I said it's useless. He didn't even come to visit you when you were in the hospital, did he? That's just because he was on the nursing business trip and I couldn't reach him. If he knew I was hospitalized, he would rush over to see me. No, my son will never come back to you. He wants to leave you as soon as possible. If you love my son, please let my son go as soon as possible. So, it's your fault that I can't get in touch with Jake? You tell him not to contact me, didn't you? No, I didn't. 
Don't get me wrong. It's entirely his decision. So, how long are you going to be in the hospital? While you're in the hospital, I'll pack up your stuff and send it to your parents' house. On the contrary, how long do you want to stay in the hospital? What? I will never forgive you for what you did to me. What? What can you do when you're in a hospital? You should realize that you're a scumbag wife who doesn't deserve my son. And agree to the divorce right now. Alright, that's it. No more games. You dirty bastard! What? What's that attitude? Oops, it's nothing. Excuse me. I was really shocked. Until then, my mother-in-law had always been kind to me. I thought that we would continue to get along well with each other. But in fact, she hated me. She wanted to separate me from my husband. And she was so cruel that she tried to make me disappear and forced me to leave him. As she said, I am a high school dropout. But I worked diligently now. It was through my work that I met my husband. When he proposed to me, he said he didn't care about my educational background. He told me that he fell in love with my personality. So I wish he had at least taken my side. I was disappointed. The last I heard from him was that he had to go on an urgent business trip. He didn't respond to my calls or messages, even though I was hospitalized in an emergency. He didn't even come to visit me in the hospital. Now, it feels that all the things that mom said are true. That my husband wanted to leave me. I began to distrust my husband more and more. A mother-in-law trying to make the wife cry and a husband who does not care about his wife. I decided to get a divorce and I promised myself to take revenge on them. Susie, are you going to be in a hospital for a while? Have you decided to get divorced? Yes, I have. I'm divorcing my husband. Well, that's wonderful. You're not very smart. I thought you'd be more stubborn than you are. But thank God, you're more understanding than I thought. I feel sad that we're put in ways like this. There's no point in being a family with a mother and son who treat me as a nuisance. You're right. You are a nuisance. <laughs> I'll tell my son that you've agreed to the divorce. And we'll get that paperwork started right away. Oh, now I can see a bright future for me and my son. Thank you, Lord. I feel great. I see. How long do you think that feeling will last? I'm telling you. When you get out of the hospital, just go back to your parents' house, okay? Why? Jake decided to move out of the apartment where you used to live. My son will stay with me for a while. Of course, don't come burdening on us, okay? I don't want to see your face, ever. We are happy that Jake finally got a divorce. But I feel bad if my hateful ex-wife comes to our house. I see. So you really want to get rid of me, don't you? Well, of course you do. Jake was unfaithful to me. What? What are you talking about? You're right. I thought it was strange. My husband rarely goes on business trips. But on the day I was taken to the emergency room, he had to go on a sudden business trip. What are you talking about? My son is hardworking 
and his boss expects a lot of him. He may be asked to work unexpectedly. And when I tried to contact him, he didn't respond at all. I was convinced. My husband is keeping secrets from me. But how can you say that when you're in a hospital? You just slept in a hospital bed the whole time. The daughter of the director of Central Hospital. What? A friend of mine told me when she came to visit me. She told me Jake was holding hands with a woman. She even showed me a picture of it. It's terrible, isn't it? His wife is in the hospital, you know. He ignores my calls, and he's on a date with another woman with a goofy look on his face. Apparently, that woman is rich. He probably thought he'd divorce me and married her. But how? How did you know that she's the director's daughter? Mom, I have many friends in my hometown. Don't you know that? Huh? The picture of my husband with another woman. I sent it to every friend I could think of. One of them said she knew her. She used to live in the neighborhood. But that doesn't mean they were friends. Of course not. There's no way your friend and the director's daughter can be friends. It's impossible. She's the daughter of a family that runs a big hospital. If he could marry her, he would have a rich life. Of course, you loved that idea, didn't you? You must have wanted to get her as a new wife. Well, if you know that much, I will admit now. Yes, I want my son to marry her. If he gets married to the director's daughter, my son will automatically be rich. And I'll be able to enjoy all the luxuries too. I see. So you were thinking about parenthesizing her. Excuse me? Parenthesizing? How dare you to say that to me? To have my son and his wife take care of me. It is natural right of parents. Besides, with you gone, we'd get a few's life insurance payout. Wow, I didn't realize you were thinking about that far ahead. You were a total scumbag. Call it what you want. Either way, my son is getting a divorce. My son will marry the director's daughter. And live an elegant life with me. Well, you can just sit back and watch. By the way, you're at home now, right? Alon? What? Yeah. I'm the only one at home. What about it? Just look out a window for a minute. Huh? What? Isn't it busy outside the house? What? I mean, um. What's going on? There's a bunch of scary looking guys surrounding the house. Oh, really? Is it because you did something bad? Maybe they're outside to punish you? Punish me? Don't tell me you sent them here. Jesus Christ, sist. Everyone looks so scary. They're all staring at me and I'm scared. Who the hell are these people? They're all my friends. What? I told you I have a lot of friends in my hometown. They are my homies. Homies? You were in a gang or something? I always thought you used strange words. You finally revealed your true colors. Bring in this gangster here. What the hell are you trying to do? I asked you, remember? When you asked me how long I will be in the hospital, I replied. On the contrary, how long do you want to stay in the hospital? You... Are you thinking of sending your friends after me to send me to the hospital? 
that's up to you. If you don't want to be hospitalized, go to the police yourself. What? Do you want me to turn myself in? What you did, it is a crime, right? I was forcibly made to drink alcohol that I couldn't handle. And as a result, I was rushed to the hospital with acute alcohol poisoning. If you don't want to go to the police, I'm sure you'll be in a lot of pain. So, what's your decision? I don't want to either. If I have to go to the police, it would ruin my son's plan to marry a rich man's daughter. It would ruin everything. You're still talking like that at this point. But I'm sorry. Whether you get caught or not, Jake can't marry the director's daughter. What? I told you that one of my friends knows her. So my friend told her everything. About what? That Jake was hitting on her, pretending that he was single. The director's daughter was furious. She said she'd never marry him and never wanted to see him again. Oh no! And it was you who introduced her. You were not that close with the director. The director didn't know that Jake was married. So you took advantage of that and tried to get him married to the director's daughter, right? I didn't know you'd go that far just for money. I'm disappointed. Furthermore, you tried to make me disappear because I will get in the way of your son's remarriage. That's not a very human thing to do. No, no. This is all my son's plan. It's not my fault. What? The truth is, I don't want to do this either. But my son asked me to do it. He wanted to marry the daughter of a rich man. So he asked me to do something about his wife. He wants a divorce before she finds out that Jack's married. He said he needed my help to do that. So. I had no choice but to get too drunk. You're an asshole, you know that. You're blaming your own son. Please believe me. I was just used by my son. Don't be ridiculous. It's too late to lie now. Why don't you look back at your messages? You wrote yourself that you were going to make me disappear. The director's daughter also testified that you tricked her. No matter how hard you try, it's all your fault. Susie, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll apologize, but can you let it go this time? I don't care if you don't divorce my son. I'll be nicer to you from now on, so please. I don't want you to get in trouble with the police. And while you're at it, would you please tell your friends outside to go home? What? Do you really think it's going to be that easy? I'm done arguing with you. So I'm going to ask my friend to drag you to the police. Don't do that! Then, you'd better admit your guilt. And get caught. If it's going to be like this, I shouldn't have let you drink the alcohol. I'm too old to be in trouble with the police. My life is over. No, no, no. Your life is just beginning. I'm going to change your alimony as well as Jake. Alimony? How am I going to be able to pay for it? I'm living on a pension. Then why don't you work? You and your scumbag son. I'm going to make sure you do scum pay for your sins.
In the end, Teresa was arrested because I reported the incident. My friends who were surrounding her house went home that night. I'm thankful to all my friends who gathered for me this time. Although everyone used to be thugs, they are all currently earnest working members of society. To scare Teresa, they pulled out the outfit they used to wear in the past. Meanwhile, I was safely discharged from the hospital, and Jake and I got the divorce. Of course, I demanded alimony from him and his mother. However, Teresa was unemployed, and Jake had to quit his job because the rumor of the incident spread to his workplace. Both of them had to borrow money to pay the alimony. They thought they were going to live a lavish life after marrying a rich woman. Instead, they were forced to pay off their debts every day. Now they work part time from morning till night, and both of them are exhausted. I think they got what they deserved. Thank you for watching. Please rate the video and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.